Right, I've got all the wires on here now. Um, I've used this um, silicon covered wire here, I think 24AWG, it's very flexible. I thought it would be useful if you have to sort of take it in and out, it's less likely to snap. Um, I bought 60 metres of it, and as you can see, <laughs> most of it's gone, so there's a fair bit of wire there. Um, anything I, I did sort of uh, neglect to, to note was that. Um, pin 46 actually appears at the top of the board and the side of the board so I've, I've taken this one out and I've got the other end of it over here as well so I'll have to chop that out at some point um, the another wire here this is the one that goes to the CPU card um, what you do net after this is, is uh, depends on what you want to do really um, the original Altair had all these cables wired straight into the uh, back plane. Um, however, what I've done, um, Jerry's just come up with this little um, card edge, extended card edge connector, and it's got all the all the pins bought out on the bus. So it's it's quite a neat solution, really, because it means you can unplug the, fr the front panel completely if you've got any problems. You know, it's a, a good way to isolate it. So I've gone for that. So that's the. The wiring set up. I'll get a little bit close just so you can have a look at the, all the various bits. Uh, there you go, lots of wires. <laughs> uh, it does take quite a while. Um, I reckon probably sort of three to four hours. So yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's, it's it's pretty tedious after a while. <laughs> I have to say. Um, right, let's get it all plugged in and we'll do a bit of testing. Right, I've decided to take a fairly cautious approach to the first bit of testing. Um, obviously we've added a lot of wiring and uh, you can see <laughs> we're going down here and a lot of components as well that potentially might cause sort of bus corruption. Uh, so what I've done, I've installed these three ICs here which are um, responsible for generating the right signal on the bus and I've also I've had to put a um, 1k resistor in here just to um, tie uh, one of the pins on the NOR gate low otherwise the right circuit won't work. Uh, the only other ICs are in here are these two buffer chips um, they're, um, they just drive the data bus LEDs as we, we saw earlier on in the previous video. Um, I've not even attached the, the data bus cable yet that's still floating about. Right, so what we'll do, let's power it up and see what happens. There we go. Right, there we go. Lots of LEDs. Uh, looks like the monitor's booted anyway. We've got a signal on the screen there. You can't really see much happening really. All the uh, address lines are on. Uh, what we can do, if we do a little loop, at uh, 8000 say, we, we can probably just hold one of the LEDs on. So if I do program 8 thousand. Uh, C3 for a jump uh, and zero zero for the low byte, eight zero for the high byte. Escape if we jump to eight thousand. See now only the most significant bit of the address is actually on. That's A fifteen. Um still got a couple of LEDs down the bottom there obviously because that's part of the uh, loop. Um still reset I'll try the next one. Right. Let's try moving a little bit further down. So if we do program 0800, we we'll do the same thing again. C3 um, 00, zero but this time put in 08. Escape jump 0800. Right now we've got the uh, most significant bit bit of that bank on there so you see if they're in banks of four so you know that's that's four there other four another four and another four so it looks like it's working I'm do a quick reset seems to be working okay right so we'll put a few more components in there and uh, see where we go from there right I've got all the ICs in now um, I've plugged it in and tested it um, unsurprisingly as you, you, you'd expect from a low volume board of this complexity there are a, a couple of problems but luckily they're easily fixed and um, that the first thing I noticed was you, you couldn't halt the processor um, every time you press stop 
although the halt light over here came on, um, it, it just flashed constantly, and it just, just wouldn't stop. Um, on, on sort of closer inspection, um, one side of the run switch uh, was linked back to 71 on the bus, which is actually the run signal to the bus. Um, <laughs> which it shouldn't be, and certainly not on the schematic, uh, and that's what was causing it. Every time the uh, board, you know, the um, CPU tried to stop, it was restarted by the run signal from the bus. Um, it's very easy to cure that one. If you look at the board here, there's a little um, through plate here, just below ICX. If you drill out that through plate, that breaks the connection, and then everything seems to work okay then. Uh, the only remaining um, issue was that the, um, although the examine next switch worked, uh, the examine switch didn't. Um, it, it just seemed to go completely haywire, uh, which wasn't a lot of help. Um, most of the, the problems that are around this this um, ICL here, which is um, responsible for the debouncing on the examine switch. I noticed initially when when you look when you sort of depress the examine switch, we were actually getting a, a um, multiple pulses out of it, whereas it should just be one clean pulse. That's the whole point of the debouncing, obviously. Um, it turned out that um, two of the uh, well, the output that was the de the debounce output was actually linked on the ball to another output on this IC. My link on the board so if you look closely I've done one of my little uh, double stacked socket bodges here <laughs> if you can see this that actually two um, let me just get in there and shot see I've actually got two sockets there I'm trying to get it in focus there ah oh, there you go that's a bit better and what I've done I've just pulled out um, I think what is it uh, one two three oh hang on 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've pulled out pin 12. You might, might just be able to see there's a pin sticking out from that socket. So basically I've isolated pin 12 and pin 13 to debounce out. So that cured that problem. I was getting a nice clean pulse. Um, and I thought that was it. Um, unfortunately not though. <laughs> um, it still went berserk so what I had another good look at the diagram and also a little poke around the IC and I noticed that pin 9 on here just seemed to be floating it wasn't wasn't high or low and it, it after looking at the schematic and 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 the um, pin out of the 1 2 3 um, that pin needs to be grounded so the fix for that one I'll turn it over. Hopefully, if you look there, I've just put a little link across between the uh, the ground on the that's there anyway for the the, the ground power uh, across to pin nine, uh, and that was it. After that was done, everything works. So uh, so that was you know, a fairly easy fix. Took a bit of time, mind you, <laughs> to find out the problems, but. Um, all going now, so uh, what I'll do is I'll get all this um, plugged in and put in the box so you can see it clearly and we'll give it a final test. Right, as you can see it's um, it's still in bits. Um, after I've finished the last bit of the video I decided to have a little bit of a play around with it and uh, although it appeared to be working fine um, previously, when I um, did some further investigation there seems to be something up with the memory write pulse uh, which is generated on the front panel board um, <laughs> it, it's fine if you just do normal memory um, read and writes it's absolutely fine no trouble at all um, if you mix that in with input output operations then something horrible happens somewhere um, I've been messing around for quite a while trying to find out what was wrong with it um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the circuit on the board. It, it's absolutely fine. I've checked everything, and you know, I've actually isolated this, that, and the other. Um, eventually, um, I traced the, the problem to a couple of the buffer chips on the CPU card, which might have been very slightly marginal, maybe. 
Um, the, the, the trouble is, is that I'm still not particularly happy with it. Um, it, it now and again, it's 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 still a bit. Um, it, it's it's not right. Basically, you know, you get the old failure. Uh, I was never particularly happy with generating such an important signal like a memory write, running down all these <laughs> all these cables. Anyway, really. Uh, so what I've decided to do is to revert back to the board we had before, which generates the memory um, write pulse much close to the bus. Um, what I've done is um, I'll just turn this over. Um, that extra cable I put in by accident, I've made use of that now. Um, so I've attached that to pin 4 of um, ICG, and that's the negative going um, deposit pulse. Because um, that, that's the really the only thing we'll be missing by having the uh, memory write circuit on the bus, because um, the reason it's on the front panel board is that you can't do a... Uh, deposit to memory without uh, mixing that pulse in with the memory write pulse obviously um, so we've got to carry that pulse back to our other board which I've done with this wire so that wire goes down there and there and back over there and what I've done I'll just turn the camera around that goes down here onto the board and what I've done I've connected that to pin 15 on the bus uh, I think it's that's that one there. Uh, pin 15 is actually designated as A18, which we're, also, <laughs> we're never going to use on a 16-bit CPU. Um, so that goes to there, and then on our board that we've been using since almost the beginning here. If you look closely, I've gone from pin 15 over to that um, resistor that we had early on, just pulling that line high, and that line that we were pulling high is the um, negative going deposit pulse so that's how I managed to get the memory deposit circuit to work so that's um, my fix for now I'll, I'll probably come up with something a little bit tidier eventually um, so back over there so um, everything everything seems to work now so I, I will this time I really will put it back together again um, also, in the meantime, I've, I've been having a chat with uh, Jerry Walker about the modifications we've made on the, on the board here. And basically, when Jerry makes the boards, he tries to make them as original as possible. Uh, in this particular case, I think he scanned about five different boards to, to get this this result, um, which which is is really good, I, I think. Um, the, the problem with the originality of the board is that <laughs> it can carry over faults from the original boards, which is, is exactly what's happened in in this particular instance. So the you know the the fixes that we've applied to this board would have been just the same as anyone would have had to apply had they got a shiny new board out of their. Um, 8800 back in 1975 <laughs> so uh, yeah that that's that's what caused that problem um, so you, I think what we've sort of come to the conclusion is is we'll provide a um, recommended modification sheet uh, so you know anyone uh, building this ball can just just do the, the the three mods I've done to it and everything should be fine so that's that one but I mean overall I'm very pleased with the board it works very well and it, it's there's a lot of work that's gone into this board, and I, th I think Jerry's done an excellent job. So um, I'm really glad he has as well, because it would have been, <laughs> it would have been an enormous job to um, make a board of that complexity. Right, I shall uh, put this back together again, and we'll have a little test run. Right, everything's back together again, so I'll just do a very simple program just to show you all the switches are working. Right, we'll flip it on. Uh, do a hard reset by holding up stop and reset. Okay. Um, set all our address switches to zero. Uh, the resets put us at zero anyway, but I can do an exam in. And you can see, at this particular point, everything's set to zero. Uh, so what we'll do, I'll put a jump in, which is C3. There we go. And hit deposit. And let's put our jump instruction into the first. Um, byte of memory so we've got the C and then we've got the 3 there and you can see it's an opcode because the M1 light's on there um, we need, all we need now is a couple of zeros to do the uh, the loop so 
we'll lower all the switches and I'll do deposit next we've gone on one address and we've put in the low byte of the jump I'll do another deposit next that's the high byte of the jump, that's the other zero um, if we go back to address zero we can see our C3 do an examine next, we'll see a zero in address one and a zero in address two uh, to run our program uh, we, we can either do hit examine or in this particular case we can just hit reset and that will get us back to zero again if I hit run now you can see our program running and you see that only these two um, address lights are lit um, obviously because the, you know, the, the program is only looping in the first um, three locations of memory right so we'll stop that uh, the other thing we can do as well is we can single step it uh, we're already at zero here so if we press the single step button that's picking up the first byte of the jump that's picking up the second byte of the jump one more and it should loop around there it goes and that will just carry on indefinitely there we go so that's how the front panel works right let's have a go at um, booting Altair DOS and what we'll do is we'll stick in the address of the disk bootloader which is FF00 so I'll do an examine on that right this is the first byte of the bootloader uh, we just need to tell um, Altair DOS what serial card we're using by using the sense switches and in this case we need to drop these first three switches and this, this whole bank of what's called the sense switches right so we should be ready to go so if I hit run disk is already in the drive there we go clicking that looks hopeful right around to the uh, laptop and there you go we've got the memory size prompt there I'll just hit return at that point and uh, we don't want interrupts the uh, highest is number we'll go for one four in there and four in there there we go so that's um, Altair DOS uh, quite an interesting thing on this is it, you have to mount the disk uh, which you do by typing mount and the disk number in this case zero if I just turn the camera around again it's quite entertaining watching all the lights so here we go just get everything in shot all right you watch this then it's actually reading every uh, sector on the disk now Sending that the LED is completely nuts. Right, there we go. Right, back to the laptop. There we go. Now it's it's finished there. So if I do, I can do a directory now. Well, should have put the right number in there. So there we go. That's Altair DOS. That proves the uh, disk drive's still working. Um, just, just to finish up, um, if, if anyone was wondering about those two wires that were hanging off the edge a little while ago, that was the um, memory write wire and the processor write wire, which I don't need for the front panel at the moment, that's why I chopped those off. Uh, and also, possibly in the earlier point part of the video, you might have noticed that I didn't actually solder the two um, um, auxiliary switches. Uh, uh, these two here. The, the reason being that, that those switches don't do anything and you know, they, they go nowhere on the board. Um, I might use them for something at some point and I'm not sure if I want um, center off switches or not and that's why I didn't solder them. And that just clears that up. Right, that'll do it for this one and I shall um, see you next time.